The Waves Fit MIDI Plus is a MIDI controller with 17 faders, 17 rotary encoders, 17 scribble strips and a bunch of user assignable keys. So for the past year I've been touring with the Fit controller and for the most part I really like it. There are a few things that could be improved but let's have a look and uh, I will show you how I work with the, the Fit controller from Waves. Right, so let's start with the faders because for me at least uh, the faders uh, are kind of the, the main thing on this one. And for the most part these are really nice and uh, quite uh, responsive. There are a few times where, especially when the faders are at the kind of uh, infinity or zero uh, position, where Sometimes when you try to raise the fader, it's kind of stuck to the bottom. So you just need to uh, let go and, and, and then just uh, do it again. The reaction time when switching layers, uh, well, it's kind of slow actually. So take a look here. So it's maybe half a second or so, but when doing live sound and especially when flipping to monitor sense, I feel it, it is a bit slow. I, I would prefer it to, to be a bit uh, snappier. But other than that, uh, these faders are actually really good uh, coming from a MIDI controller. Uh, there is one thing if you, in this case, I have the left right fader over here uh, and if you also have, have the red one as the left right fader. I can move things here, but as soon as I touch this one, the, the left right will go to, uh, to the position of the red fader. If I touch this one, uh, this will follow. If I touch this one, the red one will not follow. So if you were to turn the sound down with this one and then touch this one, it will be back on again. But in reality, that's not a big problem because uh, this red master fader, you can actually assign to be whatever you want. So let's actually have a look at that. Um, so on here, you have the MIDI fit. So you just press the cogwheel. And uh, on here, you can assign the master to be actually whatever you want. So um, you can have the lead vocal be being on, on this fader if you want or uh, in my case most of the time I actually have the DCA for all of the effects so between songs I turn this one down and all the effects go away. And while in here we can have a look at the settings. Um, the faders can be in standalone which means it's just the basic default uh, layout. It can follow mixer 1 or mixer 2. Uh, I uh, have it follow mix one. The master, as I said, it can be uh, an, anything you want. Then you have these three buttons, uh, and these can be, yeah, just a, n a number of things. Uh, basically, you can, uh, whatever you can assign to a, a user assignable key, you can assign to uh, any of these uh, buttons. So, uh, my default is store scene, save scene, and uh, this one is the talk button. Then also you can choose the mode for the rotary encoders. So these can be any combination of uh, pan gain and plugins. All right, uh, going back. So the default setting is that these uh, encoders uh, control the, the panning. Uh, then you can just toggle this one to have them control the gain or the trim. Again, for controlling plugins. And actually this plugin control doesn't work really well because these encoders will control uh, the last plugin you had up on each channel. So in this case we have the kick, here I have the uh, NLS so I can uh, increase the drive of the NLS. But if I select the snare, uh, in this case uh, I actually have the Chaps Omni cha channel as the last plugin. So now we have saturation, high pass filter, and selecting something else. In this case, 
I, I'm not really sure. Uh, I think it's the PSE. And also the, the text is really small, so it's really hard to see what, what you are doing. So, um, but uh, you can control uh, things with, with uh, this one. And uh, over here you can toggle between... Uh, now this is the tone control. Uh, we have the mid and the high over here. Then pressing here. Now this will be the no, this will be the low. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a mess. I never ever use the plugin controls on 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 these encoders. However, I use this touch and turn because then I can just touch something and whatever I touch, uh, this encoder will uh, control. Up here you have the select buttons and these uh, follow the color of the channel. So it's really easy to see which channel you will uh, select. Hitting this user button. Now all of these are uh, these user buttons. So uh, in this case I just have copy, paste and uh, the flip AB. But you can of course assign anything you want to these buttons. Same thing as these three. All right, so then, yeah, you, of course you have the solo and mute buttons, which don't need any further explanation, I think. Over here you have all of the layers. At first, these are the kind of uh, default layers, but uh, when switching to the custom layers, which you can do over here, now these are the eight custom layers. Then you have the flip button to flip all of these to accents. Uh, then you just need to select what accent you are going to flip to. So uh, first of all, here you have all of the effects, eight of the effects. Pressing this one, you have the eight first uh, monitor sends. This one you have monitor send nine through uh, 16. Usually I have these sends uh, on, on user keys instead because then it's just one press of a button doing like this first you need to select the flip button and then select the aux you want to send to so so it's a two-step uh, process rather than having uh, user assignable keys or just going uh, like this then down here you have the spill function and this uh, is a DCA spill so in this case, let's uh, choose uh, all of the guitars. Uh, this is the guitar DCA. When I press spill, I get all of my uh, guitars up here. Uh, press vocal, I get, well, in, in this case, it's just one, one vocal, but uh, uh, backing vocals, I have all the backing vocals. Um, again, this is not really a feature I use, but it's there if, if you want to. Then for some reason, we have this button uh, labeled new. And the only thing this one does is creating a new uh, scene. I don't know how useful that is. Uh, well, it, it could be useful, but to have uh, one dedicated button for this, uh, yeah, I don't know. Then the last button is the tempo button. and. This one is uh, really useful. I use this all of the time to just uh, tap tempo for delays and sometimes for reverbs uh, as well. Right, so that's about it. Uh, I like the fit controller. It's, it's a really solid metal case. Uh, things that could be improved. Well, the encoders are, they're not bad, but they're not super great as well. I would prefer to have all of these uh, eight buttons be user assignable. Most of the time I just use these four. Also the scribble strip is not super great. Uh, I think Waves have tried to just cramp too much information into to, uh, this. So you actually have five rows of information on each scribble strip, making the text so small that it's kind of hard to, to read. Uh, because mixing live, everything happens so fast. So being able to read this small text, well, it's uh, in practice, it's, it's uh, kind of impossible. But bottom line, I really like it. And it's the perfect combination with the LV1 system. So yeah, thumbs up waves.